Hi there, welcome to this video on mechanical ventilation principles. In this video we're going to look at quite an important concept in, um, in pressure control ventilation um, surrounding the concept of inspiratory time and we're going to look at how adjusting the inspiratory time can impact the tidal volume delivered to the patient and um, and how we can manipulate that to our advantage when ventilating people. And this hopefully should give you a little bit of an understanding about the relationship between pressure, flow and volume and time in, in pressure control ventilation. So here we have a couple of a couple of waveforms here, the type of thing you would see on a ventilator. So you can here see we have a pressure time waveform here. And uh, on, on this bottom blue one, we have flow time. So time is along the x-axis here, and pressure is increasing on the y-axis. In this case, flow is increasing positively on the y-axis, and, um, and then time is going on the x-axis. So here, this, this positive uh, inflection on the, flow, uh, on the flow waveform would be flow going into the patient. So this represents inspiration. Um, you can see how the flow then decays, and then the sharp sort of delineation here is, is the end of inspiration, the start of expiration. And then as this flow goes below below zero, below the baseline here, that's flow leaving the patient. So this is an exhalation, just to kind of orientate you to what these are. And then you can see how this coincides with the change in pressure that we have here. Now I haven't used any units because they're not really relevant to the understanding of the concept, but you can see how this would be a breath inspiration, a pressure controlled breath, we elevate the pressure to a certain point. We hold it there for a certain amount of time, right? We set this. We set the inspiratory time on the ventilator. And then this is our, this here would be, uh, I guess this should be a little lower, but this from here to here is is our is our pressure control level, okay? Um, so we set a pressure and we uh, we apply that pressure for a certain amount of time. As a result, there's flow generated because as we apply pressure to the, the circuit, that causes inspiration and flow to go into the patient. So then the flow starts, it spikes up and then and decelerates and has this sort of decaying flow pattern, which is typical in, in pressure control. And then we see that the inspiration ends here. There's this sharp line at this point right here. Uh, that little point is a very sharp point where the, inspiration ends and expiration begins and then flow returns uh, again and this is sort of opposite pattern it starts quite quickly and then decays back down to zero okay and you can see it's the same kind of thing here a breath going in flow starting positive flow for inspiration negative flow for expiration and so on okay so we're going to look at these and see if we can figure out something about how the ins what the inspiratory time is set at and how we can maybe really manipulate some of these things to give us a, a bigger tidal volume Okay, so we know that when we, in pressure control, we set a pressure. We have a set pressure here, that's our pressure control. And as a result, we're gonna get a tidal volume, okay? So let's just make sure we remember that about pressure control. Tidal volume, VT, varies, okay, in pressure control. And we talked a little bit about what causes this variation. We, we did a video on compliance where we talk about how stiff the lungs are. If they're very stiff and difficult to open, then a given change in pressure is gonna result in a smaller volume. And again, if the lungs are very easy to open, the same change in pressure is gonna result in a bigger volume, okay? So we've talked about how volume is variable and how we, we're gonna, the, the parameters we set in pressure control, such as the pressure and the eye time, are gonna result in a tidal volume. And we need to be able to manipulate that to a certain extent. Okay, so let's see what's happening. Let's start with the middle one, okay? Because this is what I would say is the most sort of normal of the three is this one in the middle. So we're elevating a pressure right here, this point here, we know is the start of inspiration, right? Start, insp for start inspiration. And then in the middle here, this is just our inspiratory phase, and this is gonna be based on our inspiratory time, right? So this is Ti, because we're this bottom axis is time. We're elevating the pressure for a certain period of time, which we're gonna choose. I'll just undo that, which we're gonna choose on the ventilator. And then this point here, right? This is end inspiration, right? That's where inspiration ends. Our inspiratory time that we've set has run out and we cycle into expiration. And then the pressure drops back down to the baseline. And then this phase here is our expiratory phase, 
Okay, so then let's move that down to the flow, the flow wave from here and see how this relates to that. So we have the start of inspiration. As we apply the pressure to the circuit, we're going to cause an ink flow into the patient. Okay, so this would be here, our peak flow. Okay, peak flow into the patient. And then you see how this flow sort of, as as the lungs fill, initially they're going to fill very, very quickly. The, the, the large airways are very big. There's not much resistance in them. They're going to fill very easily. So you can get nice high flows. And then as the lungs start to fill and increase and the lung volume increases, even though it's kind of, it can be a little bit confusing because even though this flow diagram is going down in that the speed at which the gas is entering the lungs is decreasing, this still, all of this time here where this is going down, is still resulting in an increase in lung volume. The lungs are increasing in volume during this whole, whole part above the white line. Everything above the baseline is positive flow and is resulting in an increase in lung volume, okay? So, and you can see here that right when we get to end of inspiration, which is here, right? End inspiration. Our flow is at baseline. The, the, the flow has stopped, okay? So the lungs have filled and then the gas flow has stopped, okay? Because it decayed back down to zero and zero flow means there's no gas entering the lungs, okay? And then, and then we ended inspiration and went into exhalation and you can see how flow starts again and this is the gas flow leaving the lungs on exhalation, okay? So you can see how uh, during the inspiratory phase we set this inspiration and the and the flow degraded all the way down to zero by the time we ended our inspiration. Okay, so, th and th how quickly or slowly the, the, the gas flow stops, um, uh, how quickly this de reaches its peak and then degrades down to zero, down to zero flow, is gonna be, again, based on the sort of compliance and resistance of the lungs and how easy they are to inflate. So you can see in this example in the middle that flow reached zero at the end of our inspiratory time, and then it we had went into exhalation. So this would be a quite a, this would be an appropriately set inspiratory time. So let's write that appropriate appropriate inspiratory time. Okay, because it's reaching zero, and then we're ending inspiration right at that point. So that's well that's an appropriately placed inspiratory time. Let's go. Let's go over to this situation here now. So you can see again, we have our, our peak inspired flow. I'm just gonna write PIF here, okay? And, and, then, and then we're gonna, the flow begins to decay. It begins, uh, there's still positive flow. There's still gas going into the lungs because it's above zero, but it's just not going in as quick as it did at the peak flow. So there's flow entering the patient, still entering the patient. And then we get to, when we end the breath, remember this is our, this is our TI, right? This is our inspiratory time. When we end the breath right here, there's actually, the flow hasn't actually reached zero, right? This is above zero. Okay, so the flow, there was still flow and still volume going into the patient when we ended our inspiration. So what that means is that this, this flow pattern here would have continued, right? It would have continued down like this and then reached zero. So all of this here is sort of potentially lost lung volume, which we didn't get during our, our inspiration. Okay, so, and, and so what does that mean with respect to our inspiratory time? Well, if, if you imagine a situation where we perhaps increased this inspiratory time here, so maybe let's pick a different color and, and lengthen, lengthen this inspiratory time like this. Okay, so we just, added a little bit more to our inspiratory time. We haven't changed the level of pressure. We haven't changed this value here, right? This is the same, the same pressure control level, but we just lengthened our inspiratory time a little bit. This would equate to this, and now we'd end up down here somewhere, right? We would allow the lungs to keep filling and keep filling, and then we'd reach this situation we had over here, right, where we would reach the flow would decay down to baseline, and we would get, we would gain this amount of lung volume, okay? So this is lung volume, which we can, well, I guess this is sort of potential lung volume, right? This is lung volume, which we could gain. You almost look at it for free, right, without having to increase your pressure control. You just increase your inspiratory time a little bit, and we can increase our tidal volume, right? because we can keep the flow going until it reaches zero. So here, 
this is uh, this I time would be you could say this I time is too short right I time too short and the solution would be to increase your inspiratory time to allow the lungs to keep filling keep filling keep filling until they reach here until until they reach that baseline of zero flow before you then start exhalation okay so that's this situation where we have an eye time that's too short now let's i can imagine what's going to happen over here we have a situation where we have here's again this is our pressure control level here this is our inspiratory time right here and that equates to this graph so you can see again the peak flow comes up peak flow and then it degrades but then it degrades all the way down to zero but the point when it reaches zero we still have more inspiratory time so then it just holds its zero flow for a while like this and then and then and then we start exhalation so essentially all of this last part here is there's no flow there's no flow going on at this point so there's no change in volume of the lungs the lungs fill to the point that they were going to fill okay to uh, at this point right here um and then all of this bit uh, baseline where you see this flat line here there's no change in lung volume here that's just the lungs just sitting there doing nothing they're not changing in volume so this is sort of wasted eye time we don't need this to be here right so all of the tidal volume that we um the tidal volume that we measure on the ventilator is actually just this bit right it's just that triangle there this is not causing any change in volume so what you could do in this situation is if you shortened your inspiratory time so maybe we'll do that if we shortened our inspiratory time to like here and, and got rid of all of this we we actually wouldn't change our tidal volume our tidal volume would be the same because all we've done is got rid of this period of time here where there was no flow going on so then we just change our inspiratory time to go so now our exhalation starts here we don't have this wasted period of time where there's no flow okay so where that becomes useful is sometimes we get into situations where we have very very sick people on ventilators and we want to and they're they're on quite high respiratory rates where their respiratory rate might be might be 30 okay and that's 30 or 32 or 34 you know it's so very they're very high respiratory rates and what this means is that you have very short total cycle time we've talked about this right if you have a, a a respiratory rate of 30 our total cycle time equals two seconds right and so if you set if you set a an inspiratory time of one second then our ie ratio is going to be one to one right one second for what of inspiration for one second of expiration now one to one is is that's that's quite a sort of difficult uh, level of ventilation to have like that would be that would be very uncomfortable for someone who's awake and it doesn't provide much time for exhalation right so we talked about the problems you can have with needing a lot of time for exhalation so if we were a if we had this if we had this redundant time here where nothing's happening there's no change in lung volume then if we were able to shorten this inspiratory time here to maybe 0 0.7 or 0 0.6 or whatever that gives us more time for exhalation right so that would then be 0 0.7 and 1.3 and i don't have a calculator but it would be one to something higher than this one to 1.7 or something so you, you'd end up with a better ie ratio and and you haven't sacrificed anything because your lung volume would have stayed the same your tidal volume would have stayed the same so hopefully that makes sense it's just a, it's just a, a short well it's a video to try and help you see what the relationship of inspiratory time to lung volume is in pressure control and how we can manipulate that by looking at our flow waveform it's a very very important thing to look at during pressure control ventilation